150 kilogram uniform beam is attached to a vertical wall at one end and is supported by a cable at the other end. Okay, believe it, pivot, cable. Calculate the magnitude of the vertical component of the force the wall exerts on the left end of the beam if the angle between the cable and the horizontal is 45 degrees. Okay. So the concept we're going to start with here is that the sum of all, it's an equilibrium, not accelerating. So the sum of all forces in the x direction equals zero. The sum of all forces, that's the summation, of all forces in the y direction equals zero. And similarly, similarly since it's not uh, rotating, it's not, um, yeah, actually, it's not rotating. There's no angular acceleration. The sum of all torques is going to equal zero as well. Now, one way you can think of it is positive and negatives, positive torques and negative torques add together. The way I like to think of sum of all torques equals zero is that all the clockwise torques could equal all the counterclockwise torques. So to start this off, I'm going to start by drawing a whole bunch of force lines, a free body diagram, if you will. So I'm going to say this is the pivot point. This is going to be the force due to the beam. So it's going to be force, gravity, beam. This I'm going to call tension. And I'm going to call this tension in the x direction. Do I want to do that? No, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to say this is tension in the x direction. I'm going to draw a little better. This. So this is going to be tension in the x direction. This is going to be tension in the y direction. And the idea here is that I now have, um, actually, I'm going to do that a little bit differently. It, it, X and Y would totally work, but I'm just going to call this tension parallel and this tension perpendicular. X and Y don't, would work fine as well. We just say our axis is rotated. This, I'm going to say tension perpendicular, so we know that this is tension that's perpendicular to the moment arm from the pivot. So I basically just broke down the tension into a parallel perpendicular component. Um, then we're also going to have probably a force pivot x, force pivot y going up. Yep, I'm good with that for now. Um, yes. So we're going to start by looking then at um, the sum of all torques. So I'm going to say the sum of all torques. So I'm going to say torques clockwise, which is down this direction, is going to equal torques counterclockwise. And the definition of torque is R cross F. So our R cross F is the cross product of R and F. These should be vectors. And it's a measure of how perpendicular two vectors are. So this is going to be the same as R perpendicular times F, which is the same as R F perpendicular, which is also thought of as R F sine of theta, where theta is going to be the angle between the two vectors. They give us theta here, but actually the theta we're going to care about is going to be this one. So I'm going to call that phi just to make it something different. And doing a little bit of geometry, I know this is getting messy. This angle here is 30, so this angle right here is going to be 30 as well. I know it's really hard to see. So I'm going to say that phi equals theta plus 30 degrees. I think we said that theta was 45. Yep, theta was 45. And so 30 plus 45, nope, jumping ahead there, 30 degrees equals 75 degrees, which makes sense because the tension is almost perpendicular with the beam, even though the uh, line, the wire, is only off at a 45 degree. 
but it doesn't matter what angle the wire is at, it matters what angle the wire is at compared to the beam that it's supporting, which is why I did uh, parallel and perpendicular. So now we're going to have our two torques. So we said torques clockwise, torques counterclockwise. I'm going to say that torque clockwise, which is due to gravity, so torque clockwise, let's see here, uh, we'd want to break up in this angle and that angle. So I think that's going to be mass times gravity times, so mass times gravity is going to be the force gravity of the beam times cosine of theta because we want to find um, this distance right here. So if we think of it, here's an easier way to look at it. So I said over here that torque is, can be R perpendicular to F or RF perpendicular. What we're going to look at here is this right there, that line right there, is going to be R perpendicular, meaning that's the portion of the moment arm that is perpendicular to the force, perpendicular right there. And this distance right there is going to be r over 2. So it's going to be r over 2, which will be the hypotenuse, r over 2 times cosine of theta, which is 30 degrees. So I'm going to rewrite this. And I shouldn't use theta because we already have a theta defined. So the hypotenuse is going to be r over 2, because we're going to assume the center of mass is at the center of the beam, reasonable. Cosine, I'm going to say 30 degrees, because if I um, use theta, it gets confused with the other theta, and things just get crazier than necessary. This is already a sufficiently crazy problem. All right, so now we got, that's going to be our torque clockwise. So that's going to be balanced out by our torque that's counterclockwise, which is going to be the tension, uh, tension of the wire. So we're going to use RF sine theta. Yes. So I'm going to say torque equals RF sine of theta, where R is going to be the length of the beam. So torque counterclockwise is going to be R. This is going to be tension, and this is going to be this times the sine of, um, I'm not going to say theta here, because again, it keeps getting confusing with the number of thetas. I'm going to use phi which we already discussed here, phi is actually 75 degrees. So this is going to be uh, the same as tension perpendicular. So 75 degrees. This right here, this value right here, is the exact same as tension perpendicular, and therefore I'm using the this, this uh, interpretation right there, or this one. It's, they're all the same thing. So, and it's easier to understand that than to try and memorize it. So we now have a torque clockwise and a torque counterclockwise, and we know they're going to equal each other. And so now we can just put all this together. We get mg r over two cosine of 30 degrees equals um, tension, which is the force, Another R, sine of 75 degrees. Um, the R's cancel out, which might be convenient because I'm not sure they gave us the length of the beam. Nope, they don't give us the length of the beam. So it's good that it canceled out. So I'm going to find that tension then is mass times gravity times cosine 30 degrees all over 2, because we got that 2 over there, sine of 75 degrees. And I can actually put numbers into this because I know the mass is 150 and I'm going to assume gravity is 9.8. So putting this into a calculator, Wolfram, we have 150 times 9.8 times cosine of 
30 degrees all over 2 times sine of 75 degrees. Now, as a better person, I just carry this all the way through. I'm not. So I get about 659 newtons. Okay, that's believable. Yes. So I'm going to erase all my seemingly random markings on here. And what we basically just did was we just looked at the sum of all torques equals zero. So we said there's a gravity here causing it to torque this direction. And we said there was a tension in the beam causing it to torque this direction. We said the torques equal to each other. And the reason we could ignore the, ignore the forces down here, because there's going to be some forces on the pivot point, we could ignore those because um, torque is R cross F. And since these forces are at the pivot point, the moment arm is going to be zero, so those torques disappear. Which is, you can choose anything to be the pivot point. You're better off choosing the pivot point to where you want a force to disappear. So that's why we did that. All right. So now we're going to use, I think, we're going to try, because we want to find the vertical force. I'll call this force pivot y. We want to find that force, um, the sum of all forces equals y. Now, for torques, we said all the clockwise equal to all the counterclockwise. We're going to do something similar here, where we're going to say that all the ups equal all the downs. Same concept, same idea, saying that sum of all forces um, equals zero. So I'm going to say sum of all forces in the y direction equals, so we're going to have two forces in the y direction. We're going to have, I'm going to call this tension y, tension x. This is going to be force gravity, and then we're going to have force pivot y. So the sum of all forces equals zero. This implies that tension in the y direction plus force pivot in the y direction equals force gravity. So this is what we're trying to find right here. So we can rearrange this and we get force pivot y equals force gravity minus tension y. So tension y, we're just going to do the triangle here. So we've got our triangle here. We just found out that's a terrible triangle. I apologize. So 659. Now we're just going to use theta here, which is 45 degrees. And we'll do a SOKATOA. I should have done SOKATOA earlier on the previous one. Um, sometimes I jump steps when I really probably shouldn't. So for this one, we're going to do sine of theta is opposite of hypotenuse. which is opposite is tension y, hypotenuse is just tension, therefore tension y equals tension sine of, and it's going to be 45 degrees. Yes. I think this is all we need. So force gravity is going to be mass times gravity. So we're told, I think it was 150, 150. So we're going to have 150. Min, uh, times 9.8 minus tension y which is tension 659 times the sine and since it's 45 degrees it doesn't really matter if it's sine or cosine but it is more correct to call it sine um, they both give the same answer, but we want to get the correct the correct answer using the correct method, not the correct answer giving the wrong method. Uh, point of pride and learning and understanding. Yeah, that might be right. I might let's do this. Let's do this. Confidence. 150 times 9.8 minus 659 times sine of 45 degrees. And we get an answer here of 1,004 newtons. So the force on the pivot in the y direction is going to be 1,004 1, newtons going up. All right, 
This one, exceedingly complicated, and looking at my work does not make it look prettier. So to recap what we did here, we drew our four spouses on there, uh, our force diagram, our free body diagram, if you will, uh, drew a whole bunch of lines. We said, all right, this is the equilibrium, so we know it's not moving up and down, it's not moving left and right, nor is it rotating. Therefore, basically the, the acceleration is zero in every direction, and the angular acceleration is zero, which tells us that the sum of all forces, the x direction equals zero, means all the lefts equal all the rights. Force, sum of all forces, the y direction equals zero, means all the ups equal all the downs. And the sum of all torques equals zero, means all the torques clockwise equals all the torques counterclockwise. So we started with the torques, and we chose the, the where it meets the wall as the pivot point. That way, we don't have to worry about the force of the pivot because this moment arm would be zero. We didn't know the definition of torque is the moment arm, R, radius, cross F. Now, cross bikes is a measure of how perpendicular two vectors are, and you can rewrite it as the perpendicular portion of moment arm times force, or the moment arm times the perpendicular portion of the force, and this is all going to be the same as RF sine theta, where in this case theta is the angle between the two vectors. We didn't have to be careful because this the angle between the two vectors is not theta, it's theta plus 30. We did math, we found tension so that it doesn't rotate. We then went back and we did the sum of all forces in the y direction equals zero. Did some math on that, we found 1004 newtons. This is a tricky problem, kind of hard. Uh, I've made it this far, congratulations. And I hope that helped. See you next time.